Hello. Okay, so this is going to be my kind of brief um, first-hand impression of the Vario XR4. Please do note, um, you know, like I said, this is just an initial hands-on. This isn't thorough or exhaustive in any way. And so let's go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, first, I do want to make a note of uh, the fact that you know, first of all, uh, this headset is not targeted towards consumers. Um, probably high-end prosumers at best, but for the most part, you know, this is a commercial um, a commercial device. So, and it's priced as such. So we do have to kind of keep that in mind and try to keep our expectations, uh, you know, in that realm. Uh, I've got a couple of. Uh, pages here of things I want to go over so I don't ramble too much. So let's first talk specs. So we've got uh, dual mini LED displays. Um, they're rated, they're, they're, Vario calls them 4K per eye for the, uh, for this Vario XR4. The resolution is 3840 by 3744 which is um, the size that they've got this, it's 51 pixels per degree. And to put that pixels, to, pixels per degree of 51 into context, the Quest 3 is said to be about 25 pixels per degree. The uh, Pimax Crystal is 35. Uh, the Vario Aero is also 35, but it can be pushed to 39 in the Vario Base software. Uh, this, this Vario XR4 is advertised as 51 pixels per degree, but it too can be pushed up to uh, 50, what is it, 50, it goes up to 55, I believe, in the software. Uh, the screen is, it runs at 90 hertz, it's rated at 200 nits, we're looking at inside-out tracking, it has eye tracking, which with that comes auto IPD adjustment, Dynamic fovi uh, foveated rendering. Uh, it does have integrated speakers. We'll take a look at that real quick. And it does have 20 megapixel pass through cameras, which uh, is supposed to be on this version, uh, is supposed to equate to about, I believe it said 31 pixels per degree for the pass through. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, uh, let's take a look at the hardware here. Now, first of all, uh, it, it is a very good build quality, similar to the Aero. Um, as far as weight is concerned, it's it's actually heavier. It kind of surprised me. It's heavier than I expected when I picked it up. For comparison, the Pimax Crystal with the battery installed is about 12. I measured it 1,240 grams, and this XR4 is spot on a thousand grams. So it's still a good 240 grams lighter, but it's nowhere near like the uh, the big screen Beyond, that tiny little, uh, the Beyond is, I think they, they say it's around 170 to 180 grams. So that's, it's much lighter, the Beyond. So this is a big boy, but it's, it's not bad once you get it on your head. Um, now let's take a look at the hardware. Um, see, first, Let's take a look here. So on top, we've got a vent, and then we've got our power button, a three and a half millimeter uh, headphone jack. Over on the side here, um, I haven't used it yet. It's uh, the software is very much in beta, so there are a lot of bugs. So that's also probably another reason why it hasn't been released to consumers just yet. But over here, with this is a touch sensitive area, you can tap or scroll. Again, the software doesn't really do a whole lot with that just yet. So I guess we'll see in the future when that gets updated. Now, the other thing that this has that a lot of, some other headsets have, but not all, and I really think all headsets going forward should have this, this eye relief. It allows you to move. You can see that you can move just how close it is to your eyes. And that is very helpful whether you have glass, a lot of situations, glasses just being one of them. We take a look at the front here. It's, it's kind of a cool mirror finish, but it is absolutely, as you would guess, uh, it's a, a fingerprint magnet. Fingerprint magnet. Uh, up top, we've got a couple cameras. It's inside-out tracking, so that's what these cameras are for. You know, we got two more here. 
Uh, I'm sh I believe that's a depth sensor, and then we've got our 20 megapixel um, pass-through cameras. We've got some, it's kind of hard to see, we've got some nice big lenses in there. The face gas gets a nice silicone, and then like a, a leather material up here. It's actually, it's pretty, it's a pretty comfortable headset. And then we've got our built-in built-in speakers down here. Kind of like the, uh, it kind of reminds me of the Quest 3, where the Quest 3 is quite a bit louder. It has better sound than the Quest 2. Um, these, this sound solution reminds me of the Quest 3 a little bit. Um, on the back here, we've got you know, your typical, and you, you tighten that, and then it does have a release down below that allows you to just pull it out. So that's kind of nice. And then up top, anybody's familiar with the arrow, we've got this up here, which tightens down on the top of your head, and that kind of helps support some of the weight of the headset on the top of your head, not just squeezing it in. Now one thing I have run into is if you're in a sim rig, whether it's uh, you know flight sim or a racing sim, I like this. It's nice. It's got this nice uh, material here, and it's you know it help you uh, helps keep your head cool. But the problem is because your head comes in contact here, we've got all of this. It's that thick at the back of your head. And what I've noticed is occasionally, depending on how you're sitting, if you turn your head side to side and you're leaning back just a little too much, because all that extra all that extra width. The back of this ends up hitting the back of your seat, which can be annoying. It's not a deal breaker. It hasn't been a huge deal. It's just something that I have noticed. All right, let me go back to my notes here so I don't ramble too much. Now let's talk about um, the software. Like I said earlier, the software is, it's Vario Base 4.0, and it is specifically for this, uh, this XR4. Uh, the previous version of Vario Base that runs like the Aero and the XR3, well, it doesn't recognize this headset whatsoever, so you have to have the new 4.0. It is beta. Um, because it's beta, it is absolutely, it's kind of, I'll be honest, it's kind of chocked full of bugs. Um, I know when the Pimax Crystal first came out, it had all kinds of issues. Um, the biggest issues it seems like most people were having with the, with the Crystal was connection issues. This didn't have a connection issue whatsoever. It connected right up, had absolutely no problems. But it's got other issues like uh, I have a, I've had problems setting the floor level with the controller. I've had problems uh, getting things centered. It makes a, uh, makes a lot of games very difficult to play because I, you can't get everything centered. So, and, and like I said, it is beta, so they are no, they are working on that. Um, before we get too into games at all, let's take a look at the controller. And I'm going to compare it to a Quest 3 controller here in a minute. So here's the controller. And it's, it tightens here like this and has a release, kind of like the, uh, the index controllers. And, you know, it's, it's got your typical, all your normal buttons. It's nothing special. Um, this doesn't, this top here doesn't adjust like the, uh, the index controllers do, unfortunately. Uh, one thing I've noticed I don't like about this, I've got, I've got larger, probably larger than normal hands, not huge, but larger. And I've noticed my, when I just rest my thumb on the control here, the, um, the buttons and everything kind of land closer to, uh, where my thumb bends. So I really have to that shows that I really have to bend my thumb, that angle, in order to use, you know, because that's how I play, I use the pad, my thumb pad. And I really have to crank my thumb up or kind of slide it off a little bit and just have it looser down on my hand, which is not optimal. I usually want it up tight for grip. So that's kind of, that'd be my main complaint about that controller. Now, if we compare that to the Quest 3 controllers, and this is just the, the meta strap, and I'll put that on. And even though the controller is physically smaller, 
my thumbs just kind of, you know, they, they everything rests just a little bit better. So when I'm playing, my the angle of my thumb isn't kinked nearly as bad. So just something to note there. The controllers are, let's see, I think it says right here, powered by Razer. I mean, like I said, they're okay. They'll do the job. Just nothing to write home about. All right, back to my notes. Let's see here. The games I've tried so far, uh, I've tried iRacing. iRacing works great using OpenXR. I get 90 frames a second with probably overall about medium settings. Um, using the same settings I did with the Crystal, and the crystal, with the Crystal I get 90 frames a second as well. So that was actually good to see um, that at this higher resolution it still performed well. I am running a 4090 with a AMD... Which one is it? Uh, 7800X3D, I want to say. Uh, let's see. AMS2, Automobilista 2, does not work. Um, when you launch the game in VR, uh, in the headset, all you get is a, two gray screens. Um, all, you know, all you see is gray. Uh, you can take, I take the headset off, and I can move the headset around, and on my monitor... You can see that everything's tracking correctly with the headset, but for some reason the signal is just not going to the headset. Tracking works, picture does not. Next, uh, Formula One 2023. It doesn't, uh, I try to launch it in VR mode and it just launches it on the monitor. It doesn't pick it up. Uh, Euro Truck Simulator 2, same thing, uh, just boots to the monitor. The headset doesn't pick it up whatsoever. Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, works, picked it up no problem, but it is really choppy and uh, I don't play a lot of Flight Simulator, so I don't know, you know, the optimal settings. I don't even, I haven't even tried it with my uh, Crystal. So it does need some, definitely need some optimization for Microsoft Flight Simulator, but it does work. All right, next let's talk about the picture. Now, you would think with 51 PPD, this has got to be the new King of Clarity. And absolutely, it is the new, the new King of Clarity. That's kind of what the Arrow was when it first came out, um, specifically for, you know, consumer devices. Um, again, you know, this isn't really a consumer device, but, you know, I've got it. So this is, this is the King of Clarity and probably will be for anywhere from, I would guess, two to four years, just like the Arrow was. Um... And depending on depending on the software that you're looking at or the game that you're looking at, I think we're hitting a point of anything over about 35 PPD, like the crystal, we're starting to hit diminishing returns as far as it really, I have to go back and forth between the crystal and the XR4 to be able to see the difference. At first, I didn't think there was any difference when I, when I ran the uh, XR4 in iRacing. And then I went back and I, okay, okay. And then after I went back and forth several times, I, you know, there, there actually is a difference. The XR4, it, XR4 is clear, no doubt. It's just not that big of a difference, especially given the price. Um, so I think, you know, right now, uh, for most people, the sweet spot's probably going to be the crystal, especially considering price. Um, and you know, right now we're really being held back by... Uh, you know, current the current gen uh, software. You know, the textures and and everything just looks kind of flat, especially when you start getting uh, to this degree of clarity. So that it's being held back by the the software. So right now, is it worth it, um, given the price of this thing? I'll I'll be honest with you. Unless you just want, uh, we're getting to feel the view, but unless you just want, you know, the biggest baddest boy on the block, is this worth it? I got to be honest and say no. Uh, most people will, like I said, be much better served by going with the the crystal. To be honest, if they're looking for an upgrade over the arrow um, or you know whatever else they have, and I have compared the crystal to the arrow, and yes, the crystal is clearer than the arrow and has much better field of view. Moving on though, because we're talking about the XR4 here, so let's talk about um, field of view. Um, First of all, I will say that binocular overlap on this headset, I don't think it's the best. However, it it's never something that has ever bothered me. 
when the Quest Pro came out, I absolutely loved the Quest Pro. And, you know, I know a lot of people uh, complained about the binocular overlap on the Quest Pro, but it didn't bother me. So it's just not something that I look for. But on the, on the XR4, I did make sure to pay, try to pay attention to that. And I do believe that in order to achieve the field of view that they have, um, they've sacrificed a little bit in the, uh, in the binocular overlap category. Again, you know, once you're in a game, for me, it just doesn't bother me and I don't notice it, but just something to note there. Uh, let's talk about a comparison about actual field of view measurements using HMD test. Um, and as most of you know, using, when we look at these values, we're not looking at the absolute actual value of what I get because mine, my face shape and everything is going to be different than, than yours and you're going to get a different value. What we're looking at is a, the difference in the value um, from headset to headset. And that'll kind of give you, a, you can gauge, you know, how much of a bump in uh, field of view you'll get um, you know, between the headsets just by looking at the difference. So, uh, so let's take a look at, let's see, probably one of the, 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 the uh, smallest field of view is the Vario Aero. So especially anybody coming from an Aero, um, the Aero has, for me, I've got a vertical field of view of 74. And I'll put these, I'm gonna put these figures in the, in the description uh, so you can take a look at them. So vertical field of view on the Aero for me is 74. Horizontal, 94. So we're not even at 100 degrees on the Aero. Uh, up from there, let's look at the Quest 3. Quest 3 has 86, I get 86 degrees vertical and 104 degrees horizontal. So that's definitely better. Um, and then we're going to go to the crystal. The crystal gets 80, I get 84 degrees vertical. So that's 2 degrees less than the Quest 3, but 10 degrees more than the arrow. And then horizontally, I get 102 degrees on the crystal which is two degrees less than the Quest 3, but it's eight degrees more than the Aero. So when you're comparing the Crystal to the Aero, you are getting a lot more field of view. Now let's go with the XR4. Vertically, I get 88 degrees vertical. So that puts it at uh, four degrees greater vertically than even the Crystal. And then horizontal, this is where it really makes a difference, uh, at least for me, I, I you know, do a lot of race, race, uh, race sims, obviously. And uh, for the XR4, I get 112 degrees horizontal versus 102 with the crystal. So that's 10 degrees more. That doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're in the headset, it, it definitely feels it. All right. And um, yeah, over 35 PPD is kind of diminishing returns, uh, particularly with you know, current gen software and how things are, um, you know, at some point we're going to get, you know, we do get to the point that, you know, shoving a screen in front of your face, it doesn't matter how high resolution it is. You know, at some point we're just not going to be able to perceive the difference. I think going forward, uh, as far as upgrades are concerned, what the companies should probably be concerned more is with is better optics and better field of view. Um, this is definitely the clarity king, but uh, for most people, like I said, uh, the crystal is probably where you want to be. Uh, as far as field of view, this is probably, if you think like, uh, like an index. So we got an index field of view, which is really good. But you've got, you know, crystal but better uh, clarity with that large field of view. So it is absolute king. Um, I highly doubt that I am waiting for the... Uh, um, the Pimax 12K to come out, it's supposed to give us a really big field of view, but I have a feeling the PPD is going to suffer because they have to spread it across such a, a large area. But, uh, you know, this is probably going to be Clarity King, like I said, for probably anywhere from two to three, maybe, I won't say four, four seems a bit much, but two to three years. So one last, oh, I totally forgot, I didn't write this down, the pass-through. As it stands right now, like I said, everything's beta and they're improving everything. And even though it has dual 20 megapixel cameras and it's supposed to get 31 PPD for pass-through, the pass-through is terrible. Not terrible, but right now the pass-through on this thing, even though it's supposed to be, you know, absolutely amazing and game-changing, 
it's actually, as it stands, it's worse than the Quest 3. I tried the Quest 3 on and passed through just the other day, or not the other day, uh, earlier today, just to do a quick A to B comparison. Uh, sitting in the same place, well-lit room, actually just sitting in the sim rig, and the pass-through on the XR4 was not as good as the pass-through on the Quest 3. Uh, it was dark, it was muddy, um, it does do dyna dynamic foveated rendering with the pass-through, so whatever you're looking at, it takes a split second, but it does sharpen up. But it's only in, in just this little area, this box that you're looking at, that it sharpens. Everything else is, you know, kind of muddy, just like, um, just like trying to read in the, uh, in the Quest 3. So that's kind of a letdown, so hopefully they get that improved, especially, you know, for businesses and, you know, at this price point. Okay, I think I covered everything. Um, all right, thanks for watching.